over a year ago now, I bought this Griffin GT712 dump trailer. And I'm kind of happy I did because it's actually kind of hard to find these dump trailers right now because of these COVID supply shortages, as they call it. And uh, something else that's interesting is the price of these trailers actually has gone up as well, which COVID, I guess. But anyway, when I first bought this trailer, I did an initial video just talking about the trailer, how I felt about the construction. Here we are over a year later, and I feel like I should do a one-year review of this trailer. What's prompted this review? Well, there's a few things that I'm starting to have an issue with. Uh, additionally, I hauled a Kubota B26 with this trailer for the first time the other day. I finally got to use the ramps. And we're going to talk about how that went a little later on in this video. But um, these Griffin dump trailers, I've said it in the past, they're a good value trailer. There's definitely higher quality, you know, more expensive trailers out there. But in essence, it really depends what you're doing. You know, if, if you're looking to haul mulch, maybe some light gravel, a little bit of topsoil, I think this is a good trailer for that application. If you plan to haul equipment on a semi-daily basis, definitely the wrong trailer. Definitely avoid this trailer for hauling equipment. So, this is a 12,000 pound trailer. That's why it's the GT712. Uh, the gross weight of the trailer, un unladened, I think as they call it, so like the bare weight of the trailer, I think is around 3,800 pounds. So we'll say that, you know, around 4,000 4, pounds as it sits. So in theory, you could put up to, what, 8,000 pounds in the trailer. I, I would never put that much in there. I, I think that's really pushing it. The max I would ever recommend putting in this trailer, even though it's a 12,000 pound trailer, is about three tons or 6,000 pounds. Any more than that, I think you're pushing your luck with this trailer. I, I think it's really more of a 10,000 pound trailer, but you know, because of the axles and such, they claim it's a 12,000 pound trailer. So, let's look under this trailer first and we'll start off with the underbody. I don't know if you heard that, but that's another thing that's been starting to bother me. When I first bought this trailer, when I pressed this up button, the hydraulic pump was instantaneous. Now, there's like a little bit of a delay, and I kind of have an idea why. All right, so let's start off with the hydraulic system. So uh, first off, the battery failed right after 13 months. Of course, it's warranted for 12 months. I think what would have been helpful is if I took the battery out of here, kept it in the warm garage in the winter time, and kept the trickle charger on there. I did plug this in like every two months in the winter time, but that wasn't enough for the battery. So, you know, if you leave this outside, just kind of expect to replace that battery every year. Not their fault. But there is a little bit of a delay like if you let this thing sit and, and stay settled down for, uh, I, I don't know, a day or two, there's a little bit of delay from the time that you press that button and the pump engages and it starts to lift. I think part of the reason why is because there are some small hydraulic leaks, especially in those Y fittings right there. Get you a closer look. So those may need to be tightened up. If you look at the driveway, there's a little bit of a hydraulic oil Puddle there. I mean, I mean, it's really not that bad. You know, you just got to add a little bit every now and then. I haven't added any to the system yet, but you know, things are starting to show. These hydraulic cylinders, I'm actually not a huge fan of these hydraulic cylinders. They are not branded, there's no brand name on them. All you have is just, you know, kind of their, their style stamped in the side here because there is no like manufacturer's name on here. I suspect these to be, you know, extremely cheap chinesium hydraulic cylinders. If you look here, see the oil slick at the top here? I mean, these things are like less than a year old. You know, I probably dumped this thing 15, 20 times in its total lifetime. And for there to be an oil slick on the top of the cylinder right there, you know, the seal's starting to fail a little bit already is just, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. You know, that should not be happening, especially this is under the cover and protection of the dump trailer, there's no reason why that sh seal should be starting to fail. And every time I look at it, it seems to be getting a little bit worse. I don't know how much those would cost to replace. I don't know if they're rebuildable. Eh, I don't know. It, it's just something that you don't expect to see after one year of light use, because in all honesty, I really use this trailer pretty lightly. 
When I did my initial review, I did like the fact that there were grease fittings on either end of these hydraulic cylinders. It's nice that they're there, but the issue I have, the grease fitting goes in between the hydraulic cylinder and this pin, and this pin just goes through, you know, this, this rail right here. There's nothing that locks this pin in here from turning. So that grease fitting is almost useless. I mean, it's useful where the hydraulic cylinder, you know, makes contact with this pin. But if you lower and raise this trailer, um, there's no grease in between this pin and these holes right here. So although it looks good, there's actually definitely going to be some wear going on in between this pin and let's see there's I don't know maybe a quarter inch of metal layer quarter inch of metal layer so I think over time with heavy use you're going to start seeing some wear you know in in those holes right there and I think there's the same thing going on down here yeah it's the same thing so you do have a grease fitting down there but it's the same thing you have that pin down there and that pin is is not locked in at all that just kind of sits on those brackets and that can you know spin around so these are definitely a bit thicker these are more like half inch as where the tops like quarter inch so that's something I'm not a big fan of so hydraulic system these are cheap cylinders the seals are starting to leak after a very short amount of time that I can kind of deal with because that's probably just loose fittings but as for these seals these should not be you know leaking like this this early on in the game so hydraulic system it works, but I'm not completely satisfied with it, especially at this point in the game. And of course, you know, it's, I, I think you get a, what, a 12 month warranty? Or well, the hydraulic pump, you got a two year warranty on the high hydraulic pump, but as for everything else, I think that's one year. So, you know, that's out of warranty, that kind of stinks. Uh, let's talk about the tires and axles. Tires and axles, no problem whatsoever. There's like minimal wear on these tires. Look at that. It's actually nail on the tire right there. Glad I caught that, so I'll have to plug that. But um, yeah, I guess that's going down to the recycling center. I kind of figured I'd pick something up, but uh, yeah. Uh, these tires, what are these? These are Ridgeway Sport tires. Um, no problem with these tires. These are really, really a pretty good set of tires. Uh, axles. These are Easy Lube axles, which I love. So you pop this little cover right off here, and you can grease up these axles. That's fine. Um, Dexter axles, and I think it's Dexter suspension components. Dexter leaf springs, yeah. So I'm, I'm really happy with the suspension and the axles and the tires. I, I think all those are just fine. Brakes, there's brakes on both axles and the brakes work flawlessly. All right, I feel like I should talk about the finish of the trailer because uh, a lot of guys in the past have had problems with the finish of their trailers. This trailer is powder coated in black, and honestly, I hate powder coat. Problem I have with powder coat is as soon as rust and crud starts to get underneath the powder coat, it just peels and peels and peels. Look at that big chunk right there, and that's just gonna keep going down along the side there. As with paint, like an enamel, like if there's a little spot right here, it takes a while for that to continue spreading, and additionally, it's easier to treat uh, paint issues with enamel over powder coat so you know underneath the trailer there's definitely some rust spots here and there forming you know of course they never really did a great job powder coating like all these little nooks and crannies but I mean what do you expect this is this is like I like to call it a budget friendly trailer but at the end of the day the powder coat is holding up well where it matters you know where where people really see the trailer such as the sides you know, overall it's pretty good. When I first bought the trailer, I put a coat of wax on it. I think that shows, even though it's a little bit dirty, you can still see some of the wax marks right there. But there's still little spots here and there where they never really got from the factory. But you know, it's it's doing okay. Size of the trailer are definitely doing okay. Again, where it matters, powder coat is holding up just fine. Bouncing back to the hydraulic system for a moment here, there's. There's two other things that I noticed while I was looking under this trailer here. I've taken quite a few hydraulic training webinars, seminars, you know, safety seminars about making hydraulic lines and things you want to avoid. This is a big problem right here. 
see this hydraulic line? See how this is in a very tight loop? That is a major no-no. Whenever you're working with these high pressure lines, you wanna have the bends as gradual as possible. So the proper thing to do here would be to have a steel 90 degree elbow and then tie the line in here, like coming that way, so you don't have this sharp bend. And you have the same thing going on on the other side. Look at that very sharp bend. So I would expect those two bends to be major failure points. And also another major manufacturing issue with this trailer, where these hydraulic lines go into the box here. Get the camera in close here. You have these hydraulic lines and they can rub right on this very sharp edge here. And they are, I can actually feel I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but there's a little bit of a wear mark on this top line right there, right at kind of the tip of that white spot. So I really need to put a piece of wire loom on this or some type of shaping gear on these lines right now. Otherwise, I'm definitely gonna have a hole in that hose there. I'm just gonna bounce around a little bit. I just wanna talk about the quality of this hydraulic and battery box. Quality of this box just it, it isn't great. It's pretty terrible, to be quite honest, which I think I've talked about it in my initial review video. Look at where they folded over this lip. I mean, they didn't fill that in with welds. I know, you know, it's not really needed, but just in terms of craftsmanship, look at these hinges. Look how shoddy that is. See, that one's all kind of like oddly bent kind of torn off. I, I don't know, something funky is going on there. Look at the bottom of this box. See those bubbles? They were in there when I first bought this trailer. I knew they were in there. They probably just powder coated over a rusty panel. Didn't bother to really clean that up. But you know, at the end of the day, it keeps the water out and it still closes. So it's functional. It works, but craftsmanship just is not there and additionally this lock cylinder that's about useless I've tried lubing that up uh, it just it's a pain in the butt to get this to lock and when you do lock it it's really hard to get it unlocked so that lock cylinder is really cheap and low quality as for the hitch part there's a little bit of rock in this that's pretty much to be expected you know, initially I was gonna put a pintle hitch system on the trailer as well as my truck, but honestly, I kinda of like the ball. The thing I like about the ball, although it doesn't have the capacity as a pintle hitch, what I like about the ball is the ball is just fixed in the receiver. There's no like rock. So, you know, when I go to stop the trailer, there's no shock. You know, it's just, it's just kinda of connected as one. Of course, you know, with a little bit of play in this hitch, as well as, you know, the, the little bit of play in the trailer hitch on the truck. There's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of give and take, but not nearly as much as a pintle hitch. So, you know, take that for what it is. The LED lighting on this trailer, I've had no problems with. They did a pretty good job with the wiring on this trailer. Um, in terms of LED lights, you got a little amber one right there. I forget. I think it's amber forward and red rear facing, but this is probably one of my favorite lights. I can't stress the importance of that fender light enough because the width of my truck is probably about, you know, up to here on the trailer. These fenders stick out, you know, in total probably a foot and a half wider than the truck. So oncoming traffic, that's a really important safety light right there. I love this little red LED in the back. See how it's kind of protruded out this column right here. So. You know, when I'm in my truck looking back in the rear view mirror, I can see this red light and this just really helps me to identify where the very end of the trailer is. I love that these LED lights are up high. It's easy for traffic to see them, you know, as opposed to most trailers where they're down low, they get cracked easy. So I do really like that they're up high. Tarp system, I have nothing but good things to say about the tarp system. I mentioned it in my first video, but I really like the way this is designed. If you have a sloppy operator who dumps, you know, some mulch or soil on top of this, it's either going to def deflect off the front of this, deflect off the back, kind of come off the tarp, land in the trailer. But even if material does get up underneath this tarp, this piece of metal right here is slanted. So anything that collects in here is just going to 
eventually fall out. So there's no water to collect in there. There's no material that will collect in there. Um, in terms of the uh, rewinding system, you know, you have these greasable pillow blocks right here. This spring-loaded locking clamp. So, you know, I just, in order to put this tarp on, I lift that release mechanism. I can freewheel this, and then when I'm ready to winch, pull it back in like so. And uh, of course, you know, I'll take the ends, I'll put bungees on the end of the trailer right there. Put that lock handle back in and that locks the tarp in place. I have nothing but good things to say about that tarp. All right, let's talk about this dump door on the back of the trailer for a moment here. When I first got this trailer, I was absolutely in love with this door because it's a dual dump door, meaning that you can swing it open like a barn door or you can set these chains over here and there's a release latch on the driver's side of the trailer there's a solid bar going across the bottom of this gate and it lifts up two latches on either side of this door and then it basically opens up like a dump truck door so again when I first got the trailer I thought oh that's great you know you, so many different applications you know if you want to put gravel and flake out gravel you know you can absolutely do that um i don't i don't really feel like it would do that i feel like this door is a nice idea but i just don't think it's strong enough to really handle flaking out gravel um and here's why i say that there's been a few instances where i'll have you know maybe three yards of mulch in the trailer and there'll be a big chunk of mulch in the front of the trailer and you know i'll, I'll have taken everything out of the back of the trailer so what do you do well, you lift up the dump body and you let that load shift back to the rear of the trailer. Now, these swing open doors, they, you know, they're tied into the bar down here with this latch, so they're pretty strong down here, but at the top up here, it's really not that strong. And what I've noticed is as that mulch shifts from the front of the trailer to the rear of the trailer, it's kind of like a, a pretty big shock on the doors up here. And I see them blow out just a little bit like I can clearly tell that they're under strain so I think from mulch you can get away with it I, I don't really know if I'd want to shift the load back with uh, topsoil definitely not with gravel I don't think it could handle gravel I think you'd definitely be doing damage to your door but what I'm getting at is you got to be a little bit careful with these swing open doors because they're really a little bit fragile additionally when I moved that Kubota B260 the other day the rear bucket of that machine sticks out past the end of the trailer. So I rested the, uh, the, the tractor um, front end loader on the doors for a second, and I just saw this one side sag. And I, I actually had to lift up the bucket and I resecured the tractor. I know it's not the best thing to do, but I had the front end loader just kind of floating a couple inches off this gate. So. There's advantages. It's definitely easier to swing open the, these doors, but in terms of moving heavy equipment, having the front end, you know, of a Kubota loader rest on these doors, you're not going to be able to do that. It's definitely not as strong as like a single piece dump trailer door. So it's, you know, it has its benefits, but it definitely has its drawbacks. So take it for what it is. Grease fittings on these doors and these grease fittings actually do serve a purpose. Although I am a little bit curious if this is a threaded bolt through this door coupler right here because you know it's a bolt, has a bolt on end right there. Hopefully that's a smooth shaft in there but goodness who knows but at least they have grease fittings. The way these doors stay open is kind of swing out, you take this pin out and then you drop this pin through here, locks into that hole right there. You can see the powder coat peeling up. but. That system's worked out really well. Have no problems with that. You just gotta remember to lock your pin in. Otherwise it may fall out going down the road. Now, I mentioned earlier on in this video that I hauled that Kubota B26 for the first time in this trailer. That machine weighs right at around 4,000 pounds. Now, I had no problem with the ramps. I think the ramps are built plenty strong. In fact, I think these ramps really could handle 10,000 pounds. I think these are probably just like generic ramps that they make for all their trailers and it's just cheaper to make them that way as opposed to making like lighter duty ramps because these these ramps are they're 
beefy, very strong ramps. Much stronger than what this trailer can really handle. You can see the tire marks as to where the tractor was in the trailer. Sorry, my hand's a little bit shaky. But uh, what happened when I, had the, when I had the tractor in here, I could definitely see a bit of a dimple in the sheet metal here. I don't think you can really see that in the camera there. But there is a noticeable dimple in the trailer right here. So, so you know, moving small tractors, this trailer just really isn't up for the task. Like quite a significant dimple. I mean, that probably sinks down, I don't know. Feels like a half inch, it's probably more like a quarter inch, but you know, eh, what are you gonna do? Same thing on the other side. The other side, not as bad. Now this side, feel it, see it's a little spooky. I was actually under there checking out all the welds and all the welds actually seemed fine. But you know, it's steel, it's the sheet metal, it's gonna stretch a little bit, it's gonna bow a little bit, especially in the sun. You know, it's gonna expand, it's gonna contract, but overall, these ramps are plenty strong. Trailer, not really great for hauling equipment around. On the side of the trailer, you have these little steps. These are awesome for getting in and out of the trailer. I mentioned this in my first video, I might as well mention it again. You know, not that you really want to be hauling any kind of heavy equipment in this trailer after I've made this video, but you know, they have these D-rings. I just hate the placement of the D-rings. Like you have a D-ring right there on sheet metal, and there's no backing right there. I would have almost preferred them to put it in the floor directly underneath, you know, a joist or some, some strong point, like right there. You start cranking on that thing, it's just gonna pull that sheet metal. Um, the one in the front, they did properly. Look, it's right in front of this riser. So that's gonna be a bomber anchor point right there. If we go to the rear of the trailer, let's see how they did. D-ring right there, and again, you know, just right on some sheet metal. So, I mean, for tying down ATVs, I think you'd be absolutely fine. I'll probably use some 500 pound ratchet straps. You'd be all right with that. But if you were ever strapping anything down pretty, pretty stout, then you'd probably want to go from the top up here if you could, because that's going to be a whole lot stronger than that D-ring that's just kind of flopping on that piece of sheet metal. But I've honestly had no issue with securing loads in the back of this trailer. You do have this little lip right here. I mean, there's honestly a ton of points that you could add tie downs and straps to, like you have this piece of flat going along the way of the trailer. You know, you could always come down in here. It's just a bunch of different spots where you could kind of hook your straps to. So I wouldn't worry about it too much, but you know, that's just a really bad spot to put those D-rings. I know Griffin makes low side and high side trailers. I elected to go with the low side trailer because this is really for residential use, you know, I'm not doing commercial jobs. Um, it's nice that I can just take sticks and branches and just throw them into the back of this trailer effortlessly. But if I ever did want to put sides on here, you know, they do make it so that you could put a, a 2x10 or a 2x12 in the back here and just bring these sides up if you really want to start hauling some bigger loads of mulch. Right now, as it stands, I can normally fit about 3 to 4 yards of mulch in the back of this comfortably. If you were to put 2x10s along the side of here, I would say you probably could get about uh, maybe about 6 yards of mulch in here. I definitely wouldn't go more than that. And in terms of topsoil, I think, what, a yard of topsoil weighs approximately 2,000 pounds. So, you know, if you follow my rule and you, you don't really want to push past 6,000 pounds, I wouldn't recommend putting more than... I don't know, probably three yards of topsoil in the back here. We're looking underneath the back of the trailer right now, and this, I, I will say, this is one thing that I do really like about this trailer. On most trailers, you only have two hinge points. There's normally one on the passenger side and one on the driver's side. Griffin has three hinge points. There's one on the driver's side, one in the center, and one on the passenger side. And all three of these hinge points have grease fittings, and they are proper grease fittings, meaning that the pin is welded in there, and where you pump grease into, um, you know, it's just 
riding on that grease. You know, there's no um, direct metal to metal. Well, there is metal to metal contact, but it's a greased surface. So I expect a very long life out of these rear hinges. All right, I think that's enough rambling on. Uh, just to recap again, tires, axles, overall structural integrity of the trailer, pretty good. I definitely wouldn't recommend hauling really any kind of machinery in the back of this thing aside from, you know, ATVs. I think ATVs are fine, UTVs. <sighs> Kubota B26, which weighs around 4,000 pounds. It started to bow, you know, the, the sheet metal in the back of the trailer a little bit. That's something that you definitely don't want to do every day, but if you got to do it every now and then, you can probably get away with it, but just understand that that's going to flex that sheet metal in the back of the trailer. Um, in terms of welds, I think all the welds are holding up fine. Hydraulic system, kind of shoddy. You know, I, I think it's, I think the hydraulic pump is okay. The lift cylinders are definitely cheap lift cylinders and the seals are starting to leak after probably 15 or 20 lifetime dumps out of this thing. Um, the hydraulic lines haven't failed yet, but there's a couple spots where the, you know, it makes those really sharp bends. So, good chance I'm going to have to replace some hydraulic lines in the future. Be aware of where hydraulic lines may chafe, especially going into this box. You know, when you go to buy one of these trailers, inspect them thoroughly. Um, in my previous video, I mentioned that I looked at five of the trailers, five of these same trailers that were on the lot, and I chose this one because the welds looked the best. The other trailers that I were looking at, you know, on the underside of the uh, the dump trailer, that she metal, a lot of those welds were just kind of kind of shoddy. Um, in terms of the box, box is kind of shoddy, but it does its job. And in terms of shifting the load to the back of the trailer, you probably could do it with mulch, just avoid gravel and topsoil. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.